Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very unusual, possibly even the most unusual black hole collision we've detected so far. This time it seems to have produced light that we really didn't expect. So let's talk a little bit more about this, because this might actually answer a lot of questions we've had previously about these black hole collisions. Welcome to What The Math. Today it's kind of difficult to excite people about detecting black hole collisions unless they're really really strange, mostly because we've been detecting at least one or two every single week and we'll probably be detecting even more as our devices improve. The black hole collisions seem to be everywhere. But the thing is, a few years ago, before the LIGO facility that's responsible for detecting most of these collisions was operational, scientists predicted that we're going to be detecting them with a lot less frequency. We actually did not expect to find so many black hole collisions. Today, scientists think that there's probably even more happening every single second, and if we were to detect all of them happening in the universe, we'd be seeing a few per second. Now that's obviously something that's not going to happen anytime soon, but detecting unusual black hole collisions right now is actually really important because it will allow us to explain why we're seeing so many black hole collisions to begin with. And this time the collision, even though it was not unusual in terms of mass or size or really anything, did seem to produce something the scientists didn't expect. The collision ended up producing quite a lot of light. Something that was previously reserved to neutron star collisions or collisions between black holes and neutron stars. And that sort of makes sense. If two black holes that don't really have any ways of releasing any matter or energy collide, like they just did in this really simple simulation, the bigger black hole will not really release any more matter, any more energy and shouldn't really produce any light whatsoever. Theoretically, we don't think black hole collisions should produce anything visible. The only thing detectable from these collisions should be the gravitational waves that we've been observing pretty much every week. So how could this possibly occur? How could two black holes produce light suddenly, for no explained reason? Well, the only reasonable explanation that doesn't break any physics involves the location of this black hole collision, and this also actually explains a lot of other mysteries we've been observing, and sort of confirms one of the theories as well. So here's what the scientists think may have happened. The most important part of this answer comes from the location where the collision occurred. This most likely happened in the center of a galaxy somewhere far, far away, very close to the central black hole, the supermassive black hole that many galaxies do possess. Here in this vicinity there are a lot of different things orbiting around the black hole, and we know so because we've seen a lot of stars orbit around the central black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. There are quite a lot of different stars here, some of them come really close to the black hole, so we know the activity near the center is usually much much higher than you would expect on the outskirts of the galaxy. We also expect there to be thousands and thousands if not even millions of different sized black holes in this vicinity as well. And although in this particular simulation there are currently around a hundred different small black holes here, they're not very easy to see. Obviously they're by nature difficult to detect. But there is one way of detecting them, when they interact with matter nearby. Now these particular black holes might not have that much matter around them because they're relatively small, but the supermassive black hole most likely also has a tremendously large accretion disk in its orbit with a lot of different matter interacting with all sorts of stars, all sorts of planets, and obviously all sorts of black holes here as well. But most of the objects here don't usually interact with the accretion disk unless they suddenly change their orbit to the point where they start slamming through the accretion disk, in some sense disobeying the orbital dynamics around black holes. And in this case, when two different black holes collide, at the moment of collision, they also, based on their differences in mass for example, will produce a bit of a momentum, a bit of a kind of a kick, and will actually increase the total velocity of the final product, of the final black hole. So in other words, right at this moment when the two black holes of different masses collide, the final black hole will receive a kick and will get some velocity vector into, I guess, a random direction, depending on how the black holes were orbiting around one another. Because of this sudden kick, the black hole will then start traveling across the accretion disk and will start slamming into the accretion disk, producing really large outbursts of visual light. 
In other words, we're going to start seeing sudden flashes coming from this direction, even though the black holes themselves with the initial uh, collision did not produce any light whatsoever. So the actual light is coming from the result product passing through the accretion disk and essentially dislodging some of the matter and producing these relatively bright flashes. And the current calculations for this collision suggest that the final product was about 100 masses of the sun in mass and its final speed, or I guess its kick velocity, was about 200 kilometers per second. Which also meant that its inclination in the orbit changed by about 60 degrees, allowing it to pass through the accretion disk not just this one time when we detected the light, but possibly even again in about one and a half years from now. In other words, in about 1.6 years from now, we'll be able to confirm this theory. And the thing is, this actually um, also explains why we're seeing so many collisions to begin with. A few years ago, some of the scientists tried to explain the idea of such frequent black hole collisions as us just detecting various types of black holes that orbit around central black holes colliding with each other. In other words, we're not really seeing these independent black hole binaries somewhere on the outskirts of the galaxy. We seem to be seeing the interactions almost always at the center of a typical galaxy. And because we believe there are thousands, if not millions of different black holes here, it actually does make sense that many of them do collide. And this observation of sudden light flash coming from this direction and possible observation in one and a half years from now will definitely confirm this theory. And note that the initial observations and initial suggestions thought that maybe we're about to see a supernova happen here. We know that nothing like that happened because the actual light detector did not have so-called color evolution. It didn't really change color, it just was a very simple flash, similar to what we usually observe from a lot of different black holes in our own galaxy when they do interact with matter that falls into them. In other words, uh, this observation was definitely not a supernova. It was something entirely different, and in this case, the only physical explanation that makes sense is the accretion disk of a very massive black hole in the center of a galaxy. And the light from this flare was even extremely similar to a typical flash we see from other supermassive black holes, so it actually all kind of adds up. But like I said, it will take a few years for us to really confirm if this is what happened here. But because the original collision happened uh, in May of 2019, we only have to wait a few months before we can detect the second passage in the accretion disk of this black hole candidate. So it's actually quite likely that we'll have our confirmation or some other questions that might be answered sometime this year. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this event and this detection from LIGO, you can check out the paper in the description below. And there's now even a Wikipedia entry for this particular event because it is one of the more rare and more unusual collisions we've detected so far. But until we learn more about this event or until something else comes up that doesn't make sense, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Possibly support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.